Pornography is a pandemic affecting people all over the world, and it impacted me. Welcome back to our channel, and we're so glad you joined us today. Like Travis said, pornography is a pandemic, and the more we work with marriages, the more we hear how pornography has impacted so many marriages in such a terrible way. It's destroyed relationships. It's destroyed intimacy inside a marriage. And so today we want to uncover some of the, the shocking truth about the impacts and the damage that pornography has on our brain. And we're only going to be touching on just the tip of the iceberg here. We're only giving a very little bit of information and there's a whole world of how this can impact us negatively. Yes. We're only sharing a little bit. Yes. In fact, we're in the process of creating a customized course that is all about the impacts of pornography and how you can get freedom over that. So you'll want to be watching for that in the next several months as we complete that course. And I just, we just really pray and hope that by creating a course, not only will you discover your why, but also get freedom around that. So when I was eight years old, I was introduced to pornography and it had such a huge impact on me and my life for the rest of my life. It impacted the way that I associated with women, the way that I looked at women. Um, it impacted my relationships. Most of all, it impacted the way I felt about my worth and the way I felt about, I just felt not good enough after being exposed to that. And I felt like I was alone in this. No one else, I felt like no one else experienced this. No one else knew what I was going through. I isolated myself. And because of the shame and the guilt and all that was holding me down, it made me keep repeating myself too. Yeah, it was something that you had to continue to search after because it just was never enough. It never can satiate you or me. It can't satisfy the urge that I have. It's not possible. Yeah, and when we're looking at God designed sex to be between a husband and a wife. And when it is within the covenant of marriage, it's designed to be beautiful, mm. a very deep, enriching and bonding experience in the marriage. And Satan, our enemy, has come and taken what God meant to be so good and distorted it and has used it for destruction in our lives because he knows that sometimes all it takes is one look and he's got you trapped in bondage for the rest of your life. And we wanna just share about some science around our brains, that it's not just a heart level issue that is spiritual warfare where the enemy is after your heart, but it's also a physical issue in that it actually alters the brain. What about for those that say, oh, I don't struggle with that very often. It's just every once in a while. Does it still have an impact on the brain? So what I hear you asking is for the people who are like, I, I rarely watch it or I only watch it every so often. Does it still have an impact on me? And yeah, it's, it's still sin. It still misses the mark of who you're committed to being. It can still affect your thoughts. And it's an open door for the enemy. It's an open door that the enemy can put that hook in there, that hook to be able to grab a hold of you at some point in the future. So there's still a possibility of it affecting us and it still is uh, harmful to us. Right, and if it's done in secret, now there's secrets in the marriage and that is just the ability for intimacy to be lost, walls to be built, and so many more things can come out of that. So even if it's just once in a while, it is a step in the wrong direction because right. it's a way what God has for your marriage. God has amazing things in store when both hearts are surrendered to him. And when pornography is involved, there is no surrender to him. And so you're missing out on what God actually has for your marriage. So here are just three ways that it can affect your brain. So pornography alters the brain. It actually causes brain damage. It's called brain shrinkage. And it alters the reward system of the brain. The, the reward system that connects the two different subconscious and prefrontal cortex together, that reward system that goes between the two, it alters it, it changes. It, research has shown that it's called super normal stimuli, meaning that we as humans were never meant to consume certain things like cocaine, gaming, gambling, those things and many more. We as humans are never meant to experience that level of stimulus. And that is the reason it alters the brain. It actually desensitizes us. This is not just a man thing. This is a human thing. Yeah. And when we engage in super stimuli, our brain learns that in order to feel stimulated, I have to have that kind of level of stimulization. And that is why addiction comes out of super normal stimuli. And so it's just really good to know, you know, when we learned this, we started evaluating what other stimulus do we have in our life that's high level that could create addiction because it is dangerous for the brain. And the reason it's dangerous for the brain is it reduces your ability to experience pleasure in all areas of life, not just sexually. It is a all areas of life. All of a sudden you're kind of 
desensitized to, mm. I don't even understand why they're enjoying themselves so much because this is not that enjoyable. Yeah, does that, res- does that resonate with you? That is, as you're talking about that, it really resonates with what I was experiencing in my life. Yeah, say more about that. And I had no idea that that's what was going on. I just wanted to disconnect from life and felt like I didn't experience joy or happiness anymore in yeah. our physical relationship. I couldn't perform mm-hmm. and did not know why I couldn't perform. And I had completely altered my brain chemistry, completely altered it. Right. And I think what you're saying there is that it desensitizes the ability to experience sexual relations with your spouse the way God designed it. Yeah. Because like we said, God designed it to be so good. And let me tell you, when pornography is not in the relationship, when there's not sexual sin in the relationship, sexual intimacy is on off the charts good. And that's how God meant for it to be. But you know, for 12 years of our marriage, I could sense that there was something going on that you just weren't satisfied. And frankly, I wasn't either, even mm-hmm. though pornography wasn't the root. I really sensed that there was no way that there could be satisfaction there. Yeah. So that also leads us into that it changes the brain chemistry. And what that actually means is it decreases the dopamine receptors. So if you have two receptors like this and the dopamine, when it fires, they don't have very far to go. But the more stimuli that the brain experiences, it actually creates a gap in the receptors. So now the dopamine has to go a lot further. The receptors have to go a lot further to exchange dopamine. And without pornography, they don't fire. You can't experience a dopamine rush in your body anymore, which is why there's a chase for the high. You know, that that site that you were looking at, it doesn't do it for you anymore. It's because your receptors, they're too far apart. You need something more intense higher levels of intensity in order to get that rush, that that high of dopamine. And that is why it leads to addiction. It makes sense of what we're just talking about. When I've lost desire to have fun in life, I've I've lost the physical connection with you that it would need more intensity of something to get me to a level of experiencing something better. Yes. Each time. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because the brain is now less responsive to pleasure. Right. I really resonate with that and how that looked like in my life is starting out at a young age, you know, it was soft porn. And then as time progressed, I needed more and more intensity. You know, I would need to have something different or something more intense later to get the same feeling. I never saw it as being an addiction. I never looked at it as being an addiction. I thought this is just something people do, you know, people normal for men. I thought it was a normal thing that, that men do. And I never looked at it as being an addiction, but now on the other side of it, I see what the it wreaked havoc on my relationships. It wreaked havoc on my brain and my emotions. And it definitely did something to my brain that I am still trying to unravel and have a more healthy brain from. Right. It also lowers your sexual satisfaction within the marriage and it cuts off your intimacy. And I know we've mentioned that a couple of times, but in real life, you no longer are able to experience pleasure with your spouse. So it, absolutely points to the reason for unfaithfulness because if i'm not providing that someone else must be there must be something greener on the other side because there's pornography and it shows that clearly this is what it's supposed to be like and so it creates this expectation that's all internal it's not being communicated and it objectifies Mm. people it objectifies them as an object for my pleasure yeah, I could see it objectifying my relationships and it skewed my, my mindset around what I expected you to do and perform also in our marriage. Right. It absolutely alters the, the mindset of you as my wife or women are no longer a child, precious child of God. Right. Are, You're no longer that. I never felt cherished by yeah. you. I really felt like I was here to provide sex. Did you feel transactional? It was definitely a transactional experience. And it was about really more you having sex and me just being available. And I think that's where the objectification and the expectations when they are there together, there's this skewed and distorted view that you're here for my pleasure. And it misses the heart. It misses what God has for us in intimacy inside this marriage is, you know, when we are physically bonding our bodies together as one and our hearts are bonded, that is what creates the kind of pleasure that God gives us access to, that he designed our bodies to feel. And so when that objectification is there, that can't happen and it becomes a selfish thing. It's all about me. You're here to please me and that's what it's all about. So. 
Yeah, when you were talking about that, bringing up something else is I, the one of the reasons most people get a divorce is something similar to this of you no longer do it for me. Right. And so I need something else. I, without taking an internal look, that it's me. Right. It's it, you that can never be satisfied. And never. It's, right. Ever. And so what would end up happening is obviously I would go to the next person who would ultimately not be able to satisfy me either after a period. Right. And I would go to the next and so on. And you may relate to that as well. And just knowing that it is damaging to your heart. One of the common phrases used by individuals trapped in a particular sin, and let's just say for this is pornography, is, it, God, if you'll, if you'll rescue me from this, I will never, I will never do this again. How many times did you say that? I can't, I can't even count how many times I said that. But let me tell you something, Adele. I said it with the, the right intentions. You meant it when you said it. Yes. I didn't want to experience this hell on earth that I was experiencing. I didn't want to experience this nasty shame blanket that I would wear around my life. I didn't want to feel this way anymore. It's, it's interesting hearing you say that because from the side of I was betrayed with pornography and how that led to unfaithfulness. To me, it looks like you're living the glamorous life. You get to have your cake and eat it too. Wow. And so to yeah. hear you share like what it's really like, I imagine if you're stuck in pornography and you're in that trap, you're resonating with me too. Mm. You know, it sounds glamorous to someone else. They're like, oh, you just get to have all the women you want and you get to look at porn and that looks great. And it is not a good life to live. Oh, depleting. So if it's not about willpower of, I just, I'm not going to do it again. I promise. Mm. I'm promising you this time. If that's not enough, what does it take? Yeah, I thought willpower was it. Like, I didn't know I had other resources. I didn't know I had other tools that, except for willpower. But, but willpower, it just is not going to work. I've got to recognize that there's a real enemy at play. And the enemy is out to destroy me and you. And I've got to know that God is my only answer. I've got to have a vertical relationship with him. I've got to surrender to him. And then I can resist the enemy and he will flee. Well, and it's actually, what I hear you saying is porn is not the real issue. Porn is not the problem. Yeah. Neither is any other thing, any addiction, any gambling, drinking. Porn is not the problem, Adele. It's my heart. Right. Something happened early in my life that I held on to different things. And I had what I told you earlier. I had this view of me being unworthy. I had this view of me not being good enough. And I don't want to feel that way. So I want to take in something, consume something to try to fill those voids, fill those holes in my life because I don't want to feel unworthy. And the quickest right. thing for me to go to is pornography because in that, for those few moments, those few moments, that person on that screen thinks I'm worthy. And you're accepted. Yeah. And you don't have to put any work There's no into work. that kind of relationship. There's no work involved in that. Yeah. So you don't have to deal with real life spouse who may be upset with you today or... Yeah. You're not on the same page, but you don't have to deal with that because you can escape into an alternative reality where the enemy makes it look glamorous. It's really dragging you down and destroying your life from inside out. So we hope you found this information useful on understanding the impact that porn has on our brain and that it is a pandemic all over the world. We appreciate you joining us today and we would love to know where did you join from? Drop that in the comments or maybe you have been impacted by pornography. We would love to hear your story. Share that in the comments. You know, we have gotten some really transparent comments on there and it really helps us understand our community and the people that are watching our videos. What are you wanting more of? And speaking of more, if you enjoyed this video, like we said, we're creating a course that is all about getting freedom around pornography and, and how to experience heart transformation in this area. And while it's not completely finished yet, it will be coming out in the next several months. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for joining us on this episode. Bye. Bye.